I'm Sarah Borks and Keto with NearEatsReat.com and I'm here in Las Vegas at ReatWorld 2015, NearEats annual convention for all things REIT. I'm joined by Jed Reagan, Senior Analyst at Green Street Advisors. Morning, Jed. Morning. So Jed, development is an important aspect of the real estate business in both the public and private markets. How does Green Street view development and what are some of the considerations that come into play when you're valuing development in an NAV? Sure. So I would say Green Street in general has, uh, I, would, I would describe as a healthy skepticism about uh, the development business. I think it's, it's a business that when it, when it works, it can work in a, in a big way, uh, but there are definitely risks uh, that, that come along with development uh, that I think can be underappreciated sometimes. Uh, for one thing, it's, it can be very difficult to time development. Uh, you know, I think a lot of companies in the past have you know, sort of gotten out over their skis at, at the just the wrong time in the cycle and gotten burned. Um, it also can create additional uh, development, uh, you know, funding risk, and uh, that that can put additional pressure on, on balance sheets. That's a concern. Um, and then it also is, you know, can be costly to carry a development platform over a full cycle, particularly uh, in, a, in a downturn if you know, there, you know, essentially uh, development is, is dormant. Um, so so that's a factor as well. I think for all those reasons, what we've seen over time is that active developers actually tend to underperform uh, less active developers. Uh, which, which I think is, is, is interesting and, and may not be you know, fully appreciated. Um, you know, as far as how we think about valuation, um, what we'll do is in our models for, for every development project that a REIT's pursuing, we will assign a profit margin you know, based on you know, sort of our expected economics of that deal. Um, and then importantly, we'll go and assign uh, what we think is an appropriate hurdle rate for a given project based on sort of the risk characteristics of, of, of that project. And so for instance, if um, you, you have an office development that might have a 50% uh, you know, profit margin potential, um, you know, but uh, but it's in a you know risky market, or there's a lot of you know competing supply, or fundamentals are, are softening. Um, the uh, the the hurdle rate that we assign to that project may be quite high and take a huge bite out of you know the potential uh, profit margin. So sort of the the overall uh, value creation potential is much more muted. So uh, that's kind of how we approach that. And what are you seeing nationally in terms of office development at this point in the cycle? I would say generally, um, you know, for office supply, uh, it's been really a, a silver lining for uh, the sector up to this point in the cycle. Uh, demand in office has been, you know, pretty weak, um, but yet since supply has been held at, held at bay for the most part, it's, it's been a positive and kind of helps support um, you know, pretty good pickup and fundamentals in this cycle. Uh, we are starting to see development creep back uh, into the conversation and in, a, in, a lot of, in a handful of markets, uh, particularly uh, you know, tech-focused markets like the Bay Area, uh, Seattle, Austin, we're seeing a fair amount of, of supply so far. It's been getting soaked up pretty well in those markets, but we're certainly keeping an eye there. And then energy-driven markets like like Houston in particular is a market that we're uh, concerned about. You're seeing a lot of supply, including spec supply coming online at the same time that uh, demand is, is uh, starting to trail off in a pretty meaningful way. Um, but the outlook overall for, for, for office supply is it for it to you know, remain pretty moderate and, and be, I think, a, a, you know, not a big concern. How are office reach office REITs approaching development these days and are there any causes for concern? Well, office REITs have definitely been getting more active on development as this cycle has, has moved along. I would say for the most part, they've done a pretty good job so far in this cycle and there's been some successful projects. Uh, I think they've been generally pretty disciplined in terms of pre-leasing risk uh, as well as not you know, sort of putting too many eggs in one basket at, at one time. Um, we are starting to see REITs getting a little bit further out on the risk spectrum in terms of uh, pre-leasing risk um, and also we're starting to see you know REITs growing their their pipelines even more even though NAV discounts are starting to increase and and uh, cost of capital uh, is, is starting to weaken for a lot of REITs um, so that's something we're definitely keeping an eye on um, and then we're also looking at you know balance sheets as something you know we're, we're always mindful of of risk around development funding and uh, something you know we're, over time, we'd like to see uh, REITs position themselves with conservative leverage so that in the event of a downturn, they're, they're going to be relatively well positioned. Okay, thanks very much, Jed. Thanks for having me. And for more news and information on REIT World 2015, be sure to visit REIT.com.